this leg of the journey is about 800 miles. Day two of a road trip in the Bronco. Today is about 500 miles. Before this video begins, let's go ahead and get a little bit of preface of why I am uh, taking the Bronco on a 3,000 mile road trip and what the structure of the video is kind of going to look like. So I just recently finished my bachelor's at Arizona State, which means I'm going down there to graduate. We we're all going to fly down there, but my dad had to have surgery on his arm, so therefore he couldn't fly due to the risk of blood clots, so he needed to drive down there. So what we decided on is that I would fly down there, my buddy would drive the Bronco down with my dad, and then I would drive the Bronco back. So that means there will be two perspectives that you will be getting in this road trip drive. One from my buddy in the beginning on the way down and from me on the way back. After both of our drives, I will go ahead and break down and give you a slight review of the Bronco as a road trip vehicle. Things I didn't like, things I did like, all the creature comforts and well grievances I had with the Bronco. Now my buddy is uh, the slower of the two drivers between us, more focused on things like MPG, drivability, and smoothness of the vehicle. While I did focus on those things, I am a bit more lead-footed driver and uh, I was focused on handling and temperatures going through the hot desert of Nevada and Arizona. I typically don't like cruising at a single speed. I like to vary my speed a lot and I'm always looking for that opportunity to pass and uh, we'll get on the loud pedal a little bit. So going into the video, be sure to drop a comment down below of your grievances or your favorite creature comforts of the Bronco for road worthiness, road trips, that type of driving. Also hit that subscribe button to keep up with the content, whether that be Corvettes, Broncos, bikes, whatever it may be. Let's go ahead and uh, try and get to 5,000. Let's go ahead and get into the video. So we're currently 200 miles into our 1,300 mile trip down to Arizona. We're getting almost 20 miles per gallon with uh, cruise control at 75. Climbing up and down the pass is on 84. Decent side wind. Well, we're about six hours into our trip, driving the Bronco down to Arizona, and uh, definitely dropped a little bit in our uh, MPG. Still cruising at 75. The road is, uh, for the most part, been pretty uh, flat. We've had a couple of uh, uphill climbs. So we've driven about 400 miles from Beaverton, give or take, and gone up about three or four passes and some good inclines and she shifts and drives absolutely amazing a lot better than uh my work truck uh which is a 2019 f-150 single cab and it's a 10 speed as well as the uh, bronco i'm highly impressed with it can't even tell it's shifting i don't think we left uh 2.2 RPMs um, the whole time, unlike the uh, F-150 that continuously is gear hunting and everything else. We could have also made it on a tank and a half due to our range and it only being about 450 miles to where we are currently in Boise, Idaho. And we're getting pretty good gas mileage at 17.7. Well guys, we did a 10 and a half hour trip. Bronco did absolutely fantastic. 17 miles per gallon. Probably ran about 600 miles on our first leg. We have finally made it to our destination at our halfway point. Once again, the Bronco did absolutely amazing. Nice 17 miles to the gallon towards the end. I am very impressed with the range at uh, when we filled up a lot for this last time at uh, 300 and uh, 70 miles uh, to empty and we're only at 86 miles to go. All in all, I'm uh, definitely impressed with uh, how it handled. See you guys in the morning. Well, we're headed to Arizona. It's quite a bit of uh, unexpected uh, change of events with the uh, with the weather. Uh, thank God we went uh, snow wheeling so we know uh, she's definitely good in the snow. So no problems there. Hopefully we're, uh, we get there sooner than later and all this pass is over. Get over this ridge and be a little bit nicer. Like I said, that, that, that storm is following us for sure. Meanwhile.
Well, we finally made it all the way down to our destination. 24 hours of driving, 1,300 miles, and the Bronco did absolutely amazing. Two and a half gallons of whiskey, a couple cases of beer. A couple of hookers, but all in all, a solid trip down from uh, Beaverton, Oregon, all the way down to the uh, southern border of the United States. And uh, roughly averaged 16.9 uh, miles per gallon. Now go passenger. There you go, that's better. Leg number two of the 3,000 mile round trip. All right, leaving the Phoenix Scottsdale area, headed up to Twin Falls, Idaho. This leg of the journey is about 800 miles. Just topped off. We'll see if I can match my friend's MPG of uh, about 20. I doubt that'll happen though. Seems average cruising speed in the Scottsdale, Arizona area down here is about 85 to 95 miles an hour. So the Bronco, if you're uh, going around to pass someone, you can easily hit the speed limiter of 101. Which, uh, yeah, if you live down here, it might not uh, be a bad idea to open it up a little bit. $5.99 a gallon. Our mileage coming out of town was 12.1. So going through the desert here, here's our uh, moving speed. I guess I have a little bit heavier of a foot. All right, temp update going through the desert. It's currently 92, was 96. Uh, just cruising here at about 70. We're at 201 oil temp and 198 trans temp. Highest I saw the trans was at 210 and highest I saw oil was 232 when I was passing people. Here comes another passing lane. So uh, we'll see how the temps do through this one. So, things other than the fuel mileage, uh, road comfort, some of these roads are a bit bumpy, and you feel it, uh, mainly just the soft top bouncing back and forth. The Bronco stays pretty planted. Wind noise is uh, definitely louder than, you know, just say a normal full-size truck but you have to raise your voice a little bit but I've heard the hard top is um, about equally as noisy especially with a uh, roof rack but handling through some of these corners IFS doing its job don't really get much bump steer we're about 120 miles into the trip gonna be coming up on Vegas here in a few hours and uh, temperatures are staying pretty good. 228 on oil and 208 on trans temp. That's a little high on trans temp. Well, it'd be very high for, uh, say, one of the Corvettes, but a vehicle like the Bronco, I'd imagine that this probably is happy right around 190. 640. Wow. I wonder what's going on there. So I guess you can set cruise control to 101. There we go. Going up some hills, 91 degrees out. Temps, oil 237, trans 208. Averaging about 11 and a half to 12 right now, but we have been pegged at speeds above uh, that. All right, coming up on Vegas about three-eighths of a tank. So far, so good. At this point in the trip, my uh, back and 
legs are getting a little stiff, but nothing a little bit of stretching can't fix. So obviously being in a car for a few hours at a time. Speeds going through the city have reduced to about 75 to 80, so we should start getting better mileage. And temperatures are at 199 for the trans and 201 for the oil. So now, at cruising speeds, we're actually out of boost. So we got the Vegas Strip over there on our left. Oh yeah, that's a pretty big track. But that'd be fun to watch some uh, well, the NASCAR there. They have a drag strip too, right? I think so. Nellis Air Force Base is somewhere around here home of the Thunderbirds. It's looking like Nevada is going to be a whole lot of nothing. All right, posted up here at a little Area 51 shack on the side of the road after a little friendly encounter with uh, locals down here. We're getting there. About 400 miles left to uh, Twin Falls, Idaho. So we're making good progress and uh, the Broncos chugging along just fine. All right, one thing I am noticing here is that at certain distances behind a semi-truck, uh, there is a little bit of wind buffeting here with the Bronco. You can see here we're about two car lengths going 70, and there's a slight shimmying motion. Faster speeds didn't really seem to be an issue, but you definitely can feel it a little bit. <laughs> oh look, now we're getting about 35 miles per gallon. C8. All right, guys, another update. Obviously, we are into the nighttime now. 192 miles left on today's leg, but it's cooled off a little bit, so temps are down at 208 for oil, 194 for trans temp, and uh, since it has cooled off air temp wise, intake air temps are obviously better, and there's a little bit more power to play with. The lighting on the Bronco seems to be doing a good job. Auto high beams catching oncoming lights one time trucker flashed his lights at me because uh, apparently the high beams didn't turn off but the lights are plenty bright enough fog lights on even in eco mode plenty of power to pass I don't know if I can see it on camera but there's definitely some snow out there all right about a crossover to 4,000 miles eight nine and 4,000 4,000 miles and the Broncos still chugging along. As for us, we have 84 miles left into the destination, so about an hour left of driving. But we have 92 miles of range and 84 miles left. And from experience so far, this gauge has been dead accurate, so we will be rolling in with just enough fuel. All right, just crossed over into Idaho, 48 miles left. All right, and we have arrived 107 and uh, the Bronco's doing great. Just walking the cat. <laughs> yep, got a leash on it. <laughs> okay, day two of a uh, road trip in the Bronco. Today is about 500 miles. First gas stop is treating us a little bit nicer at 495. Wow, uh, have not been to a spot with 85 octane before. All right, 20 mile range it said. So that means we should take about 19.8 that is dead accurate I don't like that starting day two 457 on uh, the route today it is currently 113 so that is a uh, time to beat 724 we were averaging 13.5 miles per gallon yesterday and our average speed was about 71 miles an hour over the whole day yesterday so not bad 11 hours, 803 miles. Today should be relatively a piece of cake. Starting off right with a nice view of a canyon or something over here. At least the drive today should be a little bit more scenic, traveling a little bit through Idaho and then Eastern Oregon. So 80 mile an hour speed limit here on I-84, headed to Central Oregon. We'll see what kind of fuel mileage we get, considering that traffic should be moving faster than 80, not with a uh, semi trucks being in the left lane where they're not supposed to be though. All right, so carrying good speed through uh, the western part of Idaho. As you can see though, it is a little windy. 
and uh, the Bronco is a big brick, so kind of just uh, gets thrown around, you know, easily pushed. You have to put a little bit of steering input in, but again, I don't think it's as bad as, say, a Jeep Wrangler, you know, with uh, being front and rear solid axle. Welcome to Oregon, where the speed limit's only 70. Oh look, and helmets are required. We're in Oregon. See, the nice thing about cruising at lower speeds is that the Bronco now has a little bit more zip to it. Things like cruising at 80 miles an hour or 90. The Bronco definitely could use about 10 more mile an hour to get by those stubborn left lane hogs. But most 37s, if not all 37s, are heavier than the stock 35s, so you're going to lose some acceleration. But it remains to be seen if that tuner will solve that issue. Alright, now we're making our way through some twisties here in the Bronco. Like I said earlier in this video, stays pretty well planted throughout the twisties. Obviously it's not a Corvette or anything, as long as you're not being an idiot. The IFS uh, tracks pretty well through corners. I think we could climb that. <laughs> I think so. Alright, so we have made it to uh, the Millican Valley OHP system. Somewhere over there, I broke my collarbone on my dirt bike. We just passed the abandoned store. We've ridden a lot of that area over there and over there, gotten to the top of those mountains. Back again. Back again. from the road trip and uh, as you can see the Bronco uh, ate a lot of bucks back in the wonderful cloudy Oregon yeah I miss Arizona just a little bit all right so now a quick review of the Bronco as a road trip vehicle starting off with road comfort now throughout the video I said that you know I was feeling a little stiff a little sore nothing that a uh, little stretching can't fix so seats are relatively comfortable for you know about three hours or so i feel like about at that time in any car you're going to be wanting to get out of the car and stretch i don't think the soreness was attributed to the seats themselves i got the marine grade vinyl seat foam seems pretty plush but supportive now road imperfection mitigation of course the bronco does a great job this thing goes off road i've taken it over the whoops so if it can do that it can handle some uh, little bumps in the road Haas suspension appears to have a softer first part of the stroke to help with those little bumps which also seems to help with a uh, bump steer if you hit a bump going through a corner the rear end doesn't like to kick out tracks well through corners and it handles at speed pretty well the tires let you know pretty loudly and clearly that uh they're struggling if they're about to break away now obviously i got the soft top so wind noise at 90 miles an hour yeah it's definitely a bit more than say my raptor or corvette or something like that just a normal road vehicle but the thing i did not experience which a lot of people have said they've experienced is this soft top flapping around in the wind now obviously you can just uh reach in there to the inside of the vehicle now i don't know if it's because i live in a cooler climate and the soft top really hasn't had much heat or anything to have it stretch where it can flop around more we did go through some serious winds and i did not have any issues with the soft top flapping open to the outside in all honesty the soft top really didn't flap around, flop around that much. Sure, you got a little bit when I talked about that wind buffeting behind semi trucks at about 70 miles an hour, but going down the road at 90, 100, didn't really uh, have any soft top issues. Now the hard top, can't speak on that. I've heard that it can be equally as noisy, especially if roof racks, but I'd imagine it's probably a little bit quieter. Obviously you're not gonna get 
any flopping around whatsoever with the hard top might get more rattles but at the end of the day just from talking to my dad while driving down the road once we got to our hotel my voice was a little bit tired from having to talk a little bit louder but then again we were moving at a higher rate of speed than my buddy and at you know 75 80 it uh you don't really have to yell that much now speaking of speed differences between my buddy and i on the way back we were traveling about 90 100 a lot of the time my buddy on the way there was traveling you know 75 80 so the broncos happy spot is definitely right around that 75 to 80 mile an hour mark fuel economy is definitely better at some points dictated by the wind the fuel economy was actually getting up there to about 20 mpg at 75 to 80 90 to 100 you're gonna be at 11 and a half to uh, 14 depending on the width 75 80 if you're just cruising down the road you're pretty much out of boost which again is gonna help greatly with fuel mileage 90 to 100 you're gonna be in boost pretty much all the time even just cruising down the road now passing power at 75 to 80 you got a good 20 mile an hour to be able to pass people for long stretches of road like that a lot of people are moving at 85 90 so at that point you only have 10 to 15 miles an hour in order to pass them that is where i would like to unleash the speed limiter a little bit to get to 110 so that way you have more room to pass people some people say you bought the wrong vehicle if you're trying to go that fast but uh cruising down there a lot of people are cruising at 85 to 95 miles an hour and so to be able to keep up with traffic moving at that speed yes sometimes you do need to be able to step on the gas to get out of tricky situations so having a higher speed limiter would definitely help in that arena but even passing speeds at 90 miles an hour it goes from 90 to 101 relatively quickly faster than most family vehicles on that route so it didn't really have any issues passing people there were a couple of times where some people for whatever reason didn't want to let me pass even though uh they were going below the speed limit braking confidence handling at those speeds soft inputs i was doing fine obviously a lot of people freak out about well, what happens if you have to stop from those speeds well i don't know slam on the brakes <laughs> i mean yeah it's not going to stop like a corvette but it's not going to be terrible of course if you're keeping an adequate space cushion between you and the car in front of you a couple other miscellaneous items the tires they're not the most aggressive mud trains, but tire noise wasn't all that bad. The wind noise was definitely louder than the tire noise, and the tire noise was only really prevalent going through the corners. Steering at those higher speeds still had a good bit of weight to it, but still was flickable enough to be able to avoid obstacles in the road like dead animals. Not that those are obstacles anyways in a Bronco. 10 speed shifted great, seemed to be always in the correct gear. When you step on it, it would downshift to the proper gear to be able to get you that acceleration that you needed. Cruising speeds for the most part was in gear 10. That's another thing, eco mode and normal mode. Now cruising at those speeds, I don't think there was really much of a difference in terms of fuel mileage. I think at those speeds, the transmission will be in 10th gear, regardless of what mode you're in. Eco mode is really just gonna soften throttle response and shift earlier. So if you ran into traffic, eco mode is definitely gonna yield a little bit better gas mileage. But you still have all your passing power in eco mode, still downshifts to the proper gear when you're trying to pass someone. So I think that is gonna wrap it up for this video on the Bronco, taking it on a 3,000 mile road trip. Within a month, we are already almost at 5,000 miles but that was only the first video from Arizona be sure you stay tuned for some rock crawling down there some pre-running a little bit of draggy testing and hey I graduated forks up be sure you give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed also subscribe but with all that being said join the club and I'll see you in the next one